Hi, I'm Darian. And I'm Davis. You're about to listen to the first episode of Podcast of Poseidon, the show that eventually became Muses of Mythology. We've grown and changed a lot over the last few years, and it's all thanks to listeners like you. We're an independent podcast, and our early episodes definitely sound like it. But we're proud of where we came from and what we've learned. If these old mics are too rough, we invite you to jump ahead to our season one finale, Is Poseidon a Good Dad? That's where we both start using quality mics. Otherwise, we're honored to have you on this journey as we started to explore how ancient myths became modern pop culture. Thanks for listening. And until next time, don't be like Zeus. Don't be like Zeus. Percy won a battle, got cursed. Percy brought the bolt back, got cursed. <laughs> Two out of three gods will curse you. Yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah. What I'm that sounds about right. <laughs> Greetings, mortals, monsters, and myth lovers alike. You're listening to Podcast of Poseidon, where we explore ancient myths and their modern retellings by reading Rick Riordan's Percy Jackson and the Olympians. This is Chapter 1, The Lightning Thief. I'm your co-host, on loan from the Hunters of Artemis, Darian Smart. Joining me is my co-host and brother, hailing from Cabin 12, DJ. That's me, Dionysus is my daddy. Yes, I'm sure our Baptist preacher dad will love that very much. <laughs> yes, today we are kicking off the podcast official by talking about the very first book, The Lightning Thief, which was almost called Son of the Sea God. I think Lightning Thief is a better name. Yeah, because then I would have just given away one of the good, a good... I mean, like it's pretty easy to tell that he was a Son of the Sea God pretty much the moment he showed up on yeah. camp. But... It was still a fun surprise. It was surprise. a fun surprise. And also, Lightning Thief is just a better name. Oh, yeah. It's more, I mean, like, it's more about the fact that there was a Lightning Thief rather than the Son of the Sea God, which is kind of shocking. <laughs> <laughs> Being the first book, and he is the Son of the Sea God. Well, I read the book on this lovely 10th anniversary Barnes & Noble's Collector Edition which I don't actually remember going out to buy. I think I must have been buying a new Shadowhunter book, and this just happened to be on display. And I was like, oh, yeah, my paperback version is literally falling apart. I might as well grab this. That's it's fair. pretty cool. It's got the cool cover. I don't think there's That's any fair. actual edits yeah, to the text. <laughs> Not that I... I doubt there would be. I mean, like, it's been a, it was a pretty solid read back in 2010. I think it came out in, like, 2005. Yeah, you probably, probably read it in like 2010. Yeah, I probably read it in 2009, 2010. For yeah, sure. true. And I would say this still holds up. I really enjoyed rereading this, even though I am, in fact, 26 years old now. I'm 21, and I, I mean, I listened to it through uh, Audible, and I was wrong. It wasn't Jesse Eisenberg, it was Jesse Bernstein, who's got. I don't know a, that guy at all. Uh, yeah, right. He's got, he's got a questionable repertoire, fucking resume. <laughs> so, but I mean, the guy did a pretty good job. There's a lot of like voices that I questioned, but you know, I mean, I enjoyed listening to it because fuck, it's a good read. It's a good listen, you know? It is. So yeah, I forgot that it has this weird framing device right at the beginning where Percy's like, listen, this shit is real. (laughs) And also I kind of hate my life. And also this feels familiar. You should just stop reading. Yeah. I totally forgot about that too. Like when that started, I'm like, yeah, it's a, it's a weird tone to set, especially this line. Being a half-blood is dangerous. It's scary. Most of the time, it gets you killed in painful, nasty ways. (laughs) And I was just kind of taken aback for a second. I'm like, oh, right. The premise of this whole thing is like, no, this actually happens. And I think the ongoing idea is that Percy gives this story to like, I don't know if he's Rick Riordan in the book, but he hands it to an author and that he has published this as like a memoir for Percy. Yeah. Which I definitely was like, this is weird, but it kind of dawned on me that like, is it supposed to make it feel more real? Kind of like when the Greeks were sitting around and like telling these myths to each other. Yeah. The concept was like, no, no, no. But this really did happen. Hephaestus really did create a golden net and capture Ares and Aphrodite and like embarrass the hell out of them. And it was like a great Saturday for everybody except those two. And everyone's like, yeah, this is legit. So I guess... It was a little jarring, especially like after reading, you know, Heroes of Olympus from the third person, flopping between mm-hmm. every cast, going back to first person. Yeah. Even though like, yeah, we did Magnus Chase, but Magnus Chase wasn't like, wasn't that, you know. He's a bit more refined Magnus Chase. Point. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. I mean, that's his most recent series aside from 
also uh, yeah, Apollo. Trials of Apollo. By and large, like being a kid's book from the first person can get really annoying if you've like, you know, read Goosebumps or any of those like, I'm a kid detective. And I'm going to save the day. Like that can get yeah. really grating, especially when you're adults now. But I think this one actually feels, I don't know, like he tapers he it. He does a pretty good yeah, job. It never yeah. comes off as being grating like percy talks like a kid but the shit he's going through is definitely not something for a kid. yeah 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 <laughs> especially we should probably get into the plot a little bit more we open at what should be a pretty solid field trip but it sounds like percy's class kind of sucks so that's a little draining i mean yeah museums are great museums are they were great. always I a fun going on museum uh, field trip yeah. well you got this oh i don't even remember her name she was so unimportant the bitch that was just picking on grover yeah but, uh i have it right here yeah, he got the book right there. I do. I have it. Nancy, right Nancy Boba Fett, who definitely was Boba Nancy Fett in Boba my head Fett. because Jesse Bernstein pronounced it as Boba Fett. Boba Fett. Oh well, Boba Fett. Boba Fett. Okay. Okay. So to clarify, yeah. they went to the Metropolitan Museum of Art in Manhattan because Percy's from New York. And the most important takeaway is that Percy's math teacher, Mrs. Dobbs, tries to murder him because she's actually a fairy. Yep. And yep. then his Latin teacher, Mr. Burner, rolls up in his wheelchair and tosses Percy a sword that was once a pen. And then he kills his math teacher. And then when he uh, leaves the museum again, everybody just gaslights him. Everyone's yeah, like, I hope Mrs. What, what was it like? Cure took care of you. Yeah. I know it started with a C. Describes her as like perky blonde and like really friendly. Yeah. Grover and Chiron totally fucking gaslit. Percy yeah. <laughs> throughout the whole first two chapters. Like what? No, which like, later <laughs> on you get that like, because the whole premise is like... Like, yeah. Yeah, but then, like, it was really obvious Grover was doing it. Yeah, yeah. I guess we didn't... I mean, I think we're operating under the assumption that, like, if you're listening to this podcast, you've probably read these books. If you're not, and if you're just joining us now, uh, Percy's best friend is this scrawny kid named Grover, who is kind of weird and kind of walks with a limp. And his Latin teacher... Ooh, okay, so... As Tam has already said, his Latin teacher is actually Chiron, the centaur who trains heroes. Why is the Greek centaur teaching Latin? He probably couldn't get the curriculum of Greek. <laughs> like, let's be real here. He had to convince the Latin teacher to get out of his spot so he could take it, right? And it's like, I mean, that's already one change that the school had to go through. It's like, yeah, I'm changing the Greek. You're the Greek, too. And they're all that's like, a little too much. Why? Who the fuck uses Greek nowadays? <laughs> who the hell uses Latin? Unless you're going to, like, run a harry potter podcast and be able to like know what all the spells mean you don't need latin it's not super helpful yeah but like latin's more common than greek. from schools i've seen latin's just an elective like latin's is just a common elective but greek is not okay i want to real quick clarify latin is not useless i'm sure there are a lot of academic and career fields <laughs> in which if you took latin it'll be incredibly beneficial uh, yeah i mean science. like you, but if you're 12 biology <laughs> yeah like biology. <laughs> but like if you're i mean like if, if you're 12 like percy who is is he 12 yet? He's 12. Or has he turned 12. 12? Yeah. He's yes. 12. Okay. He's 12, turning 13 in the summer. Because Grover was all distressed because he says that he's like, oh, they never make it past 12? Yeah. No, they never make it past sixth grade. That's right. Sixth grade. Okay. Percy's birthday becomes a thing later, but in the first book, it's not because we don't know about the prophecy yet. August 18th, which is shocking for uh, Son of Poseidon. Anyway. Yep. I think it'd be like maybe June is Cancer or February and March for Pisces and Aquarius, but... Uh, summertime. August 18th. I think that's like Leo. No, that, I don't know. I know tarot. I don't know the Zodiac. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Let's smash cut through this as quick as possible so we can actually get the fun part. Because as we discussed, there's way more before he actually gets to Camp Half-Blood. When I was reading it, I thought it just went from the museum to camp. Wow, there's like a bunch of stuff in the middle. Yeah, I didn't realize that there was all this like covert ops Percy was doing. eavesdropping in on <laughs> fucking... Chiron and yeah, Grover. yeah. So Percy's <laughs> trying to study. So he's dyslexic and he has ADHD. So it's really hard for him to focus. He's not super great at traditional schooling. So Percy's been labeled a bad kid. He never actually makes it to the end of a school year before he gets expelled or just politely asked not to return. And so that's why he's <laughs> at this uh, kind of. Nah, I mean, I bet mean, the school is like fine. It seems like it's a dumping ground for like rich parents who has problematic kids, and they just send them to this. Yancey Academy. Oh, yeah. I think he even describes it like that, too. <laughs> so it's, like, not really much of a school, more of a, more of a daycare. Probably, yeah. Than anything else. Just a daycare with a sleepover. <laughs> Percy's actually trying to study for his Latin test because he likes Mr. Burner, his teacher. Uh, he's been told by his teacher that, like, this stuff will save your life one day. And he's like, 
What? Honestly, he's probably sneaking Greek. In oh, he is. Cause he's, like, let's be honest. He teaches Greek and <laughs> Roman, which you wouldn't usually learn. And again, I didn't actually take a Latin class, so I don't know whether they cover Greek stuff. But Chiron is just straight up teaching him the Greek legends, whereas you'd think he'd be teaching the Roman versions, but obviously. Because that's what Latin yeah. is. But he's like... Oh, yeah, yeah, don't worry, it's Latin, and no one, like, really knows Latin. To These 12-year-olds fucking... aren't going to question it. Well, I mean, like, even the teachers are like, yeah, yeah, that's Latin. Meanwhile, he's completely teaching them a Greek curriculum. Oh, he is. <laughs> he's got, like, Roman armor and stuff that uh, Percy says, but... Okay, so anyway, so he's... Percy's trying to study for this, like, final, and he's like, I am having such a hard time. I'm just going to go and talk to Mr. Burner and be like, hey, I'm trying. When he has to give me an F, uh, I want him to know that at least I tried. And I didn't just, like, fuck off on this yeah. one. But when he goes to try to talk to his teacher, he overhears Grover already in the classroom. And they're talking about Percy and how there was a quote-unquote kindly one that was at the school. And what are we going to do? And no, we can't tell Percy yet. And so Percy, like, dips just in time to see, like, a scary large shadow of someone yeah. with a uh, bow and arrow start to come to the door. And what sounds like hooves going yep. down the hall. So nobody brings it up. School's over. He's asked not to return. Okay, this is fine. And uh, he goes back home to New York and Grover takes the bus with Percy. He's like, okay, this is weird. I didn't know you lived in Manhattan. Cool, man. And then the bus breaks down. And while they're waiting for the bus driver to fix it, Percy looks across the street and sees three old ladies sitting at a fruit stand, knitting just the biggest pair of socks. You are, I think, a single sock. Just one sock. Big enough for Sasquatch or Godzilla, which Percy. Per, those are, are completely two completely different sizes. Different sizes those are totally different sizes. Sasquatch is like a size 25 and Godzilla would be like a size 3000. So first, I need you to just, what are you? Yeah. <laughs> I know you will know Greek stuff as, come. he's 12. He's 12. No, but he's you're 12 and you know that Sasquatch <laughs> and Godzilla are not the same size. Like, how big is this sock, Purse? Let's be really, a tw- uh, for me at 12 years old, I'm like, after size fucking 15, everything is just giant. (laughs) So while he's watching and Grover sees the old ladies and starts to panic a little bit, uh, while Percy is watching them so knit, uh, he watches as one of them brings out a pair of scissors and cuts the yarn. And it's kind of weird. Just really like weirdly intense for snipping (laughs) some yarn. Obviously, as we'll figure out later, that these are the fates. If you see them cut the thread of what might be your life, that's probably a bad thing. No, it's not great. And then that's when Percy, or not Percy, Grover really starts to freak out. It's like, it's always sixth grade. They never make and it fast. Percy's like, cool, man. I'm in sixth grade. Um, I'm. Yeah, what are you talking about? That's me. That's me. What I'm just going to go ahead and ditch you at the bus stop and just dip back to my apartment and hopefully see my mom because I don't want to deal with all of this anymore. So Percy goes to his apartment and we find out that he's got like just a real shitty stepdad. Just a real piece of work of that fucking dude. Gabe. I like how just immediately out the gate it's like, yeah, you're not supposed to like this guy. Absolutely not. There's no, you're not supposed to like him at all. Do not even like try to sympathize with him. He's not getting redemption arc. Just fucking, he's a piece of shit. Don't even worry about it. He smells like moldy garlic pizza wrapped in gym shorts. Percy gets home. He's playing poker with his buddies. He demands Percy gives him whatever he has left from his, like, the bus fare. Yeah, bus and taxi He makes fun of Percy for getting bad grades and for getting kicked out of school, which, like, dude, that's a 12-year-old. Like, what is your problem? Yeah. He's 12. <laughs> like, that was my, that was a- big issue i'm like bro you're just tearing into a 12 year old that's like yeah, barely yours. not even, not even. <laughs> his gambling buddies also suck because they like watch this kind of abuse take place and then one guy half hardly is like man he's just a yeah. kid but it's like no you're still hanging out with this asshole he you see regularly like verbally yeah. abuse his stepson and like definitely has abused yeah. sally in front of these dudes and they're still hanging oh, out yeah. so they oh, yeah. i'm not gonna say they all suck if you're gonna sit by and let this kind of oh, thing yeah. take place like you are complicit in this kind of shitty behavior. So then, Sally Jackson comes home, who is a goddess, not actual Greek goddess, but like... Just she's like, incredible. she's incredible. No, like, she's great. Really. that Sally, Percy's mom, is... She works at a candy store, I think in Grand Central Station. She had to drop out of 
college because her oh her parents died in a plane crash when she was very young she was saving up to go to school i think her uncle got sick i don't remember what exactly but she she won something like that she she had a very unfortunate amount of unfortunate events yeah that came she through was like her a life just like <laughs> baudelaire okay so yeah series of unfortunate events <laughs> But she's such a kind person. She clearly loves her son, even though Percy is, as he says, like, I know I do not make life easy for my mom. He's, like, short-tempered. He gets in fights. He's kind of, like, anger issues. He's a nice kid. But, like, your dad's never been around. A bunch of weird things always happen to you. Yeah, People never been... believe that, like, my math teacher turned into a winged beast and tried to murder me at the museum. You're crazy. Like, a snake snuck into my... What the fuck yeah, are you like talking about? a snake about? crawled into my bed when I was... <laughs> A baby at daycare and then i hercules strangled it and i was like that's that's not yeah. a thing <laughs> but sally's wonderful oh, uh we see more about how gabe sucks while she's just trying to have a moment with her son and he's like hey how about some bean dip and it's like fuck you you jackass she hasn't seen her kid since like christmas yeah it's like that's easily six months like just piss off for a second like five minutes at least or like you know the rest of your life <laughs> so but like percy's really sweet he's like my mom is the nicest lady in the world she should have been married to some millionaire not some jerk like gabe which like yeah but this happens all the time yeah sally's like percy just be chill with gabe don't get in a fight with him for like 10 minutes and as soon as we're done packing we're going to the beach oh we're at the beach <laughs> it's like their favorite place in the world because of course like they love going to the beach yeah montag montag thank you dj yeah percy's pretty sure that's where Sally met Percy's dad, who he has never met. He doesn't know anything about him. Sally doesn't like to talk about him. She just says he had to go away to sea and just never returned. And Percy's like, okay, well, fuck, fuck I right. guess. Yeah. Fine. All right. So they dip out. They're going to the beach. It's a great time. They're eating all this blue food, which I... Okay, so here's the thing with the blue food, which I do love. It's super charming. It's like this thing where they eat blue corn chips and blue candy and she'll make... I'm super into it, gotta say. Yeah. Yeah, it's super cute. Like, Sally will make Percy like blue pancakes for breakfast on his birthday, all these nice things. I thought that that was like a thing from Percy and Sally, where it was like when Percy was a little kid, he's like, why aren't there any like blue foods? And so I was like, my boy, I got you. It's actually Gabe being an asshole. (laughs) Really? Yeah, yeah. I like wrote that down because I was so taken aback is what actually is like Gabe and her got in an argument. Here it is. I guess I should explain the blue food. See, Gabe had once told my mom there was no such thing. They had this fight, which seemed a really small thing at the time. But ever since, my mom went out of her way to eat blue. She baked blue birthday cakes, she mixed blueberry smoothies, she bought blue corn tortilla chips, and brought home blue candy from the shop. This, along with keeping her maiden name Jackson... Okay. <laughs> when I was listening, I kind of spaced out for that small bit and came back when he's like, he kept his last name. I yeah. Like, okay, like, what? Cool. So, yeah, so she did, it's like proof she wasn't totally suckered by Gabe. She did have a rebellious streak like me. And so mm. that's really sweet. Do you th- okay. I'm not I'm not going to try to defend Gabe here because he's he's a piece of shit. But do you think the argument might have sparked because there's no natural blue foods? Probably that. But like, <laughs> are we going to get into semantics over food? Yeah, right. Fine, dude. Don't be a dick about it. Because yeah. it just sucks. I feel like later on it gets retconned, so it's more of a Sally Percy thing. Right? I mean, at like this Gabe's point, like... it is like a Sally Percy thing because well, yeah, Gabe, is prob- Gabe probably refuses him. to eat that kind of shit because of that guy. argument. Probably. So all chill, and then suddenly uh, there is a hurricane, which is weird because it's like June, and that's not hurricane season. And, I, and it came out of nowhere. Came out of nowhere, but as Percy mentions earlier, the weather's been really weird since Christmas, y'all. Like, I don't know what's up with it, but it's just been like weird. There's just been a weird vibe since Christmas. And then suddenly there's a pounding at their cabin door and, oh shit, it's Grover. Grover, what are you doing here? We gotta go. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, he's like, we gotta go. And Sally looks at her son and she's like, hey, Purse, what happened at school that you didn't tell me about? (laughs) Because some shit happened and he didn't tell his mom about the Fury thing, which, fair, but also, Sally Jackson needs to know this kind of shit. Oh, yeah. So also, Grover is a satyr. But I mean, like, let's be real here. Percy probably would have believed that his mom wouldn't believe it, you know? Which, oh uh, yeah, fair. Which is fair, because no one fucking believed him. But I think the reason he doesn't tell her is not necessarily because he doesn't think he's going that she won't believe him. I think it's more like he just wants to have this normal moment with his mom oh, for probably. a little bit. I and he's worried that telling. I imagine whenever he's told her these weird things, I don't think she's ever straight up gaslit him, like Grover yeah. and Tyrone <laughs> are doing. Oh, and all, oh, so before Grover shows up, Percy has one of his first, like, weird psychic dreams. It's about a white horse and a golden eagle on a beach 
trying to kill each other. Chris is like, <laughs> I have to stop them. Oh, and then man. he just has the same dream like four more times, but with different characters. Like, yeah. you know, you're just remixing the myth again and again to like get your point across. Yeah, and then like every now and again, somebody will talk to him from the earth. Yeah, and it just kind of accelerates from there because hey, uh, it's great. You're going to write about Greeks, and you need to use that whole dream Thank plot device. That's kind of important. Helps. Yeah, it's super convenient for like getting across your themes. All right, uh, yeah, that's what I like. <laughs> that's what I'm like seeing. I'm like, man, if without these dreams, the story would be practically fucking confusing. <laughs> Really confusing. The, the dreams actually do help. So Grover shows up. Twist. He's a satyr. He's got cloven hooves. Uh, they jump in the car. They speed away. Sally is trying to get them to some summer camp that Percy's dad wanted to send him, but she didn't want him to go there because if he did, she'd probably never get to see him. And uh, they're being chased by something. DJ, do you want to reveal what they're being chased by? The Minotaur. It's the, the Minotaur! The yes. Minotaur from the labyrinth that was murdered by, I don't remember the guys. You know, we'll talk about it in the Minotaur episode. I don't remember either. Oh, but Percy does. I think he mentions it here. Theseus. There it is. Well done. So they get out, of, or they reach this hill. Sally's telling Percy, get over the hill. As soon as you're past that pine tree on the top of the hill, you'll be safe. Percy's like, okay, let's go. And she's like, I cannot cross the boundary. And Percy's like, that's bullshit. Yeah, Percy's like, what the hell? It's like, I can't. You have to go. And the Minotaur is there, and it's Big and beefy and wearing Fruit of the Loom tidy whities which is a visual. Just, yeah, that's what they say. That's, that's what image. they say. That's what they say. <laughs> at least there's tidy. At least he's wearing something, I guess. Grover's gotten hurt because the Minotaur threw something at the car. The car exploded. Everybody got out, but Grover's injured. He's half. He's mostly unconscious. And he's just constantly whining for food, but we don't have any tin cans for the guy. Sally is trying to distract the Minotaur so Percy and Grover can make it over the hill. But Percy turns around just in time to see the Minotaur grab his mother by the throat and, like, choking her. And all of a sudden, she just dissolves into golden light. And then and Percy goes off. <laughs> he gets a Percy mad. goes off. He, yeah, he starts going straight at Bullfighter, gets out his jacket, like, come on, let's go. Minotaur runs at him. Percy somehow has these amazing, like, Spider-Man reflexes, just kind of backflips over the Minotaur, breaks one of its horns off by accident. When the Minotaur charges at him again, he's able to stab it. I don't it know if it was by accident. Like, it was pretty... I mean, I don't think his goal was to break the horn off. I think he was trying to, like, hold on. Well, it said that, off. like, he was already wrapped around. If he had just... But then he, like, started to pull, you know? Yeah. He started to pull with his jacket around the horn, and that it just broke off. So, like, maybe it wasn't his goal, but his instincts is probably the intention, you know? That's true. That's a fair point. So they kill the Minotaur. Percy grabs onto Grover, drags him over, sees this camp, sees a big white house, and is just like, okay, passes out. He's done. Has more weird dreams. Wakes up a couple times. There's this blonde girl feeding him something that tastes some like pudding. popcorn. And he's starting to feel better. Some pudding that tastes like buttered popcorn, which I don't care. Yeah, neither butter. do I. Like, that's a weird, t like, I don't like buttered popcorn jelly beans because of the texture. If you're feeding me pudding that tastes like <laughs> buttered popcorn... No, I, I love that. buttered popcorn, yeah. So Percy wakes up. Uh, he is at Camp Half-Blood, which is that summer camp his dad wanted to send him because, hey, Percy, surprise, you're half-Greek god. This is the camp where all these kids can go to. Your dad was a Greek god. Whoa. We don't know which one, we're, but, we're gonna, you know, uh, five hopefully guesses, Hopefully we're going to figure it out. Who knows? Maybe you'll just end up in Cabin 11 for the rest of your life. Yeah, yeah, because there are 12 So cabins. bullshit. <laughs> Holy fuck. So bullshit. Yeah, let's talk about that. Okay, so we've got Camp Half-Blood now, which is what we've yeah. been waiting for. <laughs> which is when it starts to get good. Yep. So we run into Mr. Burner again. Twist. He's Kyra on the Seder. He, the centaur. The centaur. He is, he's the trainer he's of legends. train heroes. Trainer of legends, trainer of heroes. The camp is run by Mr. D, straight up Dionysus, who is on probation because he got frisky with a nymph that was uh Which I gotta say, Zeus is real petty about that. Did, did he like did he audibly thing. call dibs because i don't think he did let's be real it's zeus he never calls it here's the thing i bet the nymph didn't want oh, anything no, to do with either not. of them I, i'm just so saying like, <laughs> like he was just being a petty bitch about it yeah so dionysus mr d is not allowed to have any wine or alcohol yeah you know so he just drinks you know, diet coke daddy dionysus the god of wine and partying is not allowed to have wine or party no he's like this sucks and i hate these children but here i am so there are you show up and there are 12 cabins at the summer camp and like three of them are not being used at all because you've got zeus's cabin harris cabin poseidon's which cabin, gotta say and then kind of fuck that there's no hades cabin really yeah, messed so, up 
So you've got the 12 cap. Well, it's the 12 Olympians, right? Everybody who has a throne on Mount Olympus, yeah, like, they're the ones that get the like, I, I would have at least made a cabin for each big name Greek, you know? Well, the reason I think, like, as, uh, so, let, okay, let's run over who has cabins real quick. So it's Zeus and Hera, Poseidon. One, two, three. And then Demeter, Artemis, Apollo, Hermes, Hephaestus, Dionysus. How many was that? Uh, not enough. Who am I missing? Not enough. Who am I missing? Uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you here in, like, two seconds. So we got Zeus, Hera, Poseidon, Demeter, Ares, Athena, Apollo, Artemis, Hephaestus, Hermes, Aphrodite, and Dionysus are the original 12 cabins. There it is. Yep. So they all have a cabin. Obviously, there's no one in the Hera cabin because she doesn't have kids. Because she's the goddess of marriage and, marriage and virtue. So, you know, she got it. There are nobody in the Zeus or Poseidon cabins, we learn, because after World War II, which was apparently just fought by the children of Zeus and Poseidon versus the children of Hades. So, like... Hey. Adolf Hitler was a child of Hades. <laughs> yeah, I should to say that. So all of Hades' kids are Nazis and fascists, <laughs> apparently, which is wild because that kind that of- That gets thrown like, out the window in like two books from now? <laughs> kind of, but even- We'll deep dive into this more when we actually talk about Hades and his episode. Okay, so big world war, and then this, the big three, Zeus, Poseidon, and Hades, just said, all right, no more kids. That's why there's no one in the Zeus and Poseidon cabin. And then Hades doesn't have a cabin because they hate him so much that just the idea of having a, his cabin for his children to be welcome in Camp Applet is, like, appalling. When we do the Hades episode, where we will just talk exclusively about Hades and his role in Greek mythology and the interpretations we have of him now, we'll get all into that because I've got lots of opinions our guest does too. It'll be great. For the time being, you only get to go in a cabin when you've been claimed by your godly parent. Until that happens, you get to go hang out in Cabin 11, Hermes' cabin, because that's Hermes is the god of travelers and all these things. So why not? We'll just put all of these kids. And then it's like. All these kind of like. And then it's like 20, 30 kids in one fucking rinky dink, normal ass summer cabin while everyone else has like a fun theme to their cabin. Her like, you'd think they'd at least fix up Hermes' cabin, but no, it's just like some generic summer cabin with bunk beds and fucking. I mean, I think. They, they all, all have, have bunk, bunk beds, beds but it's all like, like they're all also like made out of a different material. This one is like a rinky-dink fucking wooden splintered summer cabin. Of, like that's how we explained it pretty much. Yeah. Oh, I was right. Artemis doesn't have anybody in her cabin either. Obviously, it's like Hera's cabin. It's like for honor. We don't know that they it actually even, does get used. That even, doesn't come out until later. Says, like, yeah, yeah, we hey. didn't have one. She throw a fit. <laughs> oh yeah, we're worried about Artemis throwing a fit, but like Hades is yeah, right, whatever. Like, which I don't think she'd give a damn. She's like, oh, whatever. Like, my girls will camp in the Literally. woods. Literally. But you should have one for me because yeah. these are my girls. <laughs> anyway. They deserve some luxury, even though my tents might be even fancier than your fucking cabin. They yeah. super are, though. <laughs> Percy gets dropped in Hermes' cabin. But it's okay, because he meets Luke, who is, like, 19 years old and has been there forever. And it's just, like, the coolest guy you've ever met. Like, when you're, like, a kid and you meet this college student who's just, like, nice to you just, and just like, vibes dude like luke literally just vibes like, treat you like it's you're a great. human yeah and it's, it's the great. voice that the guy gave luke was like let's go bro <laughs> the total fucking server dude <laughs> bro voice and i'm like i don't know if i would have done that for luke but like let's go yeah, sir, that's, a, that's a choice okay. <laughs> Percy also meets Annabeth, who is the blonde girl helping take care of him, uh, who is also asking him if she knew what was taken, if he knew what was going on. And then the first thing he she says to him when, when he was conscious was you drool in your sleep. Oh yeah, that's that's Annabeth. She that's a power that's move. That's an right absolute there, where power. She knows move. that this guy is Yeah, yeah. She knows this guy's important, like she can tell. Because I mean, Grover found it. <laughs> Let's be real here. Mm -hmm. And Chiron is clearly like... And Chiron came and scouted him out personally. So yeah, he's he's important. It's like, yeah, you're gross, dude. <laughs> yeah, he had to be put in your place, like just for the record, which I respect. Percy's got a bit of an ego. Oh yeah, for sure. Another character we meet is Clarice. Oh, Clarice. Hello, Clarice. Who is very quickly introduced as a daughter of Ares. And she's big, she's a big burly built like a brick shit Oh yeah, shit yeah, she'll fuck girl. your shit up. Like she's the daughter of Ares, she's has war in her blood she knows what she's about i do respect that but she's also kind of a bully and i don't care for that shit yeah <laughs> so her and her siblings from aries cabin grab percy and they're like well if you're a new but you're new blood we've initiation. got initiation initiation which i'm like do we just let this happen well i mean let's be real here. annabeth was going in to help them but percy's like no i gotta do this also annabeth is like <clears throat> it's initiation bye who annabeth has been there since she's like seven like she's been there forever yeah. 
they're gonna give Percy a swirly. He's like, I'm not doing this today. Like, we're not doing this today. Like, listen, I've had a he's like, I've had a rough day. I watched my mom die. My mom died. It, my best friend got knocked the fuck out. He's a satyr. Did you guys not did you know Grover was a fucking satyr? I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I do not want my head in a toilet right now. And then the pipes burst. And then the pipes just happened to burst, and everybody gets soaked except, except for Percy. Uh, except like a three foot diameter around Percy. And we're all standing around wondering, now who could Percy's dad be? I just I, who knows? Well, like, Control like, over water? Like Annabeth Smart, like, and she knows. Like yeah, she's well, pretty, like, she she starts to piece it together right then. Yeah, and Chiron probably and she, she doesn't know for too. certain because honestly, like there's different gods that could probably control water like there's different ocean gods too and it's so he could even be like maybe he was a child of Hephaestus who controlled the pipes themselves and the tech in that yeah like it, maybe it was but it it's like any. the dry around you know it's the yeah that's the thing i'm sure chiron knew too i'm sally knew but like it's one of those things where it doesn't matter if they know and they tell percy like we know for a fact because if you're godly parent does not claim you it does not matter as we can tell yeah. them, like the dozen or so kids in hermes have- so and i feel i know it's it's uh, it sucks but i guess like it's also like how many greek guards are there really lots they don't have a cabin no and that's, that's bullshit so it's like they probably like even if i claim them where the fuck are they gonna go and that's still vastly irresponsible we can all agree oh, yeah. on that oh yeah no 100 percent. like it's not even a fucking thing so yeah what i like about this is like kind of right off the bat just the situation at the hermes cabin lets you know that like the greek gods aren't really great people like, because Percy talks about all these kids who look sad and angry and how this cabin is so, like, overcrowded and all these kids are, like, waiting for a phone call that'll never come. Like, you instantly get the gist of, like, yeah, these are yeah. gods, but, like, they suck, though. Like, and that was the slow but slow but pretty fucking strong trip of Percy becoming jaded, oh, jaded. over That's the creep the gods. Yeah. <laughs> That's the start. It was like, wow, like, they're gods. Don't you think they'd have time? Like, you have nothing but time. You're immortal. You yeah, have nothing literally. but time. Send a fucking postcard. Like, I don't that know. That thing you gotta do right now can wait maybe five seconds and be like, yeah, that's my child. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah, <laughs> I don't, and you don't have to. So, but it's okay for Percy because he does not have to wait long to be claimed. He has a great time at camp, makes friends, learns sword fighting from Luke, hangs out with Annabeth. Like, things are going great. Percy's actually having fun for the first time in his life, except for the weird dreams, the fact that his mom died. Yeah. And he's like, wow, this is feeling like a family. Yep. Yeah. And then... Capture, the, Capture flag. the flag! It's murder games! Woo! It's, it, it's time for to not maim anyone, yeah. but I'm gonna fucking tear someone's nose off. Yeah, so they capture the flag. It's various cabins against each other. The so mainly Athena versus Ares. Athena versus Ares. They currently have the flag. Hermes' cabin is siding with Athena, which means Annabeth is leading the charge. Percy is set on guard duty, and he's like, "Okay." And then Clarice, well, and sucks. Her, yeah, Clarice and her cronies <laughs> show up, and they're specifically like, "We're gonna kick your ass because you embarrassed us, and we're the kids yeah. of Ares, and you don't get to do that." Wait for it, y'all. So they get in a fight, and then um, Percy's about to kind of get murdered a little bit. Like maybe I don't think they really were, were gonna kill him, but they were probably gonna beat him. They were, they were gonna, life. they were gonna like break a couple bones. Maybe, 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 maybe his femur. You know. But you know, we've got nectar and ambrosia. He's gonna be fine. We'll beat him within an inch of his life, but everything will heal him. But just an inch. So we yeah. can do it again. It'll be fine. Yeah, it's not yeah. But then he calls upon the power of the creek and just annihilates these bitches because he like, Percy... heals his wounds. He gets a strange fucking power surge because, you know, water. With water. And yeah. then his reflexes get fucking tenfold. And then he just destroys them. And everyone's like, what the like, how did you do that? <laughs> yeah, just in time for Luke to run across with the flag, and then everybody gathers around and sees a fucking the the blessing of Poseidon just over his head, which is like a sea green trident glowing. And everyone's like, Holy shit. And he's like, What the fuck? All hail son of the sea god. And everyone bows to him. Then he's immediately attacked by a hellhound. Which, here's a fun fact. Monsters like that aren't supposed to get into camp because it's protected. No. And Chiron even says that. And he's like, unless someone summoned it here. And he's eyeing everyone. So he's like, Percy's not <laughs> safe. All right, Percy gets a quest. So Percy goes up to the big house, big cabin, goes upstairs. There's a mummy. Psych, she's the Oracle of Delphi. That's creepy. But we move past that. He gets a quest. Or he gets a prophecy, which means he now has a quest. Well, he gets a quest, and then he goes up there to get a prophecy. You shall go west and face the god who is turned. You shall find what was stolen and see it safely returned. You shall be betrayed by one who calls you a friend. 
and you shall fail to save what matters most in the end. Okay, so the thing about that is, like, no one's been able to go on a quest in several years because Luke went on his quest and got his ass kicked by a dragon. He succeeded, but, like, got hurt pretty bad. That's yeah, why he's got, right, like, yeah. this nasty scar, which, like, probably still hot. Yeah. <laughs> Defining characteristic villain scar. Weird. <laughs> To clarify, when I said probably still hot, I don't mean probably still hot in spite of the scar. I mean, scar, probably hot. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I got you. <laughs> uh, so he finds out that someone has stolen Zeus's powerful lightning bolts, his yep. master bolt, uh, made by the Cyclopses, so Zeus could go kick the Titans' asses way back and forever. Ago. A weapon that makes the nuclear bomb we dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki look like a fucking wind. Yeah, not great. So we gotta go get that back. Who stole it? We don't know. But, like, everyone is just suspecting Hades because... Hades. Because Hades. Everyone just hates him on principle. So it's like, well, you gotta go to L.A. Because obviously... Oh, I suppose we always talk about the whole Western civilization concept where the gods have followed the fire of Western civilization since the Greeks. Yeah. They'll just go wherever, like, is the strongest... Pretty much the strongest power at the moment. Which is, like, very Eurocentric. And I do not care yeah. for it. I'm pretty sure neither does... Rick Riordan at this point. No, no, he has walked that shit back. Which yeah. like, you grow, you you're a writer, you grow, you learn, you understand. Nothing but love for Uncle Rick. Yeah, the gods are above the Empire State Building, and Hades is in LA. In LA, because of course, because of course, LA. I've been to, I've been to both, and I will admit, I'd rather go to New York. Sorry, LA. <laughs> it's kind of. I haven't been to either, but even like just looking at everything, I'd rather go to New York. <laughs> Percy gets a quest. You got to go get the lightning bolt back from Hades and you got to give it back to Zeus because Zeus thinks you stole it because you're Poseidon's kid and they weren't supposed to have kids, you know? So like, obviously. Percy's like, okay, I'll take this quest. And mostly because he's like, look, the underworld's real. My mom is there and I'm able to get her back. I don't give a fucking damn about my dad who never sent us a, a child support check. I don't care about these gods and their petty bullshit because they just abandoned their kids here. I don't care about the Zeus's lightning bolt. I'm going to do this so maybe I can get my mom. Respect. I get it. Priorities. Priorities. Yeah, these people you know, have done nothing for you. Go. It should be easy. All right. You've got to the summer solstice, which I think at the beginning of the book is in two weeks at that point. That's what that's the deadline to get the bolts back. Yeah. Now, it should be nothing. A flight from New York to L.A., we can do that in a day. Unfortunately... He's the son of Poseidon, and Zeus is a fucking petty bitch. Yeah, Zeus is a petty bitch. And if he goes in the sky, which is Zeus's domain, he'll probably just straight up strike him down because he'll take it as a personal insult. Even though the gods are not supposed to get directly involved with any of this stuff, which is why Zeus just can't dip over to L.A. and be like, my, my brother... What the fuck is this? Why'd you steal my yeah, lightning? Give me my fucking lightning. And Hades can be like, you're a bitch, get out of my house. <laughs> and it's still shit. <laughs> but no, they have to send heroes to do it because, again, because the Greek gods kind of suck. Yeah, because they're just lazy pieces of shit. They just want to watch mortals toil. They do, because they're they're immortal. And so this this is their entertainment. Like, these yeah, are this not- This is pretty much just like reality TV for them that they can manipulate. You know, like when it's like, hey, uh, text this number to vote on your- Yeah, it's Big Brother. Person, <laughs> to vote your person. And they're just like watching and they're like, yes, yes, I want that one to win. Yeah, actually, super, yeah. Percy goes with Grover and Annabeth, who Annabeth was not supposed to be in the room, but she has this like magic Yankees cap from her mother. Oh, Annabeth's mom is Athena. Yeah. <laughs> I have notes. I'm going based on notes. I didn't even think to write that down just because. <laughs> Die, because Annabeth, the, because Annabeth's at this point, it's Athena. common knowledge, but like, I guess it's not because some people are new to the series. Yeah. So, Annabeth's mom is Athena. She's super smart. She wants to go on the quest because she's like, look, I've been here since I was seven and I learned all this stuff, but you don't know if you're any good until you actually go to the outside world. The problem is, Athena and Poseidon do not get along. They just. They just don't. They sided against each other, I think, during the Trojan War. Uh, well, like, even, even before that, when Athens was being Athens built. Athens was being built, yeah. Athens, I believe that was the first one. There's, like, a lot of personal slights. Yeah. But, like, Annabeth really steers into that. So even though she wants to go on the quest, she's kind of, like, meaner like, I can't her. like you because my mom doesn't like your dad. I'm like, yeah, well, that's like, bullshit. Well, Why is the son paying for the atrocities of the father? Which is, like, a thing. But also, like, I guess in real life, kids will do that. But it, it's annoying. In the oh, book yeah. when she does this. Like, I'm like, can we not? She's smart. Like, why are we steering into this whole thing? And it so that's a, that's a reoccurring thing in their relationship where every time they start to get along or Percy, something happens. Annabeth is like harsher on Percy than the situation dena- demands for for like half yeah. the month. If Annabeth didn't volunteer, he probably would have chose Luke. I'm yeah. gonna be real with you. Oh, he probably would have picked Luke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's like, well, I can take two people and I want to take two people. So like, I guess I'll take 
Luke, he's cool, right? Like yeah, Luke is cool. He's been very nice to me. He trains me. He trains me. He's smart. He's been on a quest before. Like obviously, yeah. Luke is the best choice. And then Annabeth is like, "Oh, I already volunteered. It's mine." Which like, <laughs> which like is the best option because part she's already she's also been helping Percy like reading and like training and these kind of things like so it's not like she hasn't done anything they're kind of like friends but not quite yet so they go on their quest uh Grover uh, we probably should mention Grover is what's called a searcher there are satyrs who are supposed to go out and find no it's a keeper he's not a searcher yet he wants to be a searcher searcher is the pan thing that's right that's right what you said was a keeper 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 okay so that means they go out and they find demigods and help them get to camp half blood because half bloods they tend to get, like, attacked a lot by monsters. Oh, yeah. It's a problem, especially if they're super powerful. Like, if they're one of their parents who's, like, a major, like, top tier like, god. Maybe the son of the sea, you know, who I'm just saying is incredibly powerful and an unstoppable force yeah. that you just can't fuck with. Or, or maybe the daughter of Zeus, who was Grover's first assignment seven years ago, who Hades personally sent the minions of hell after. Oh, yeah, and, and eventually died and zeus took pity on her and turned into a tree which is the big pine tree on the hill yeah which protects the camp yep talia made her last stand to protect grover and her friends make sure they could get to the camp and as she was dying zeus turned her into pine tree which like okay the whole thing <laughs> yeah. So, yeah i guess well, thanks at least thanks, now, Daddy like, zeus. The, now the camp's protected but the, like, yeah her, well. her spirit it does help protect the camp and everybody in it so that's pretty great but that's why grover's like i understand if you don't want me to come with you because i did fuck up with talia He's like what are you talking about but you my bro yeah. Bros for life. You're bros, yeah, bros like ride or die. <laughs> because I have like three friends, and um, I know this means a lot. So you should come to. Okay. Who, who else? Who else are we supposed to pick? Clarice. Clarice. You shitting me? And none of the other kids at this camp have names yet. So, yeah, not even like I think we mentioned Dionysus has twins. Yeah, they don't. We haven't. They haven't gotten their names yet. I think. Yeah, their names are Castor and Pollux. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is come not what you want to name your twin boys for a lot of reasons. So they go on their quest, they hop a bus for the quest, because like, okay, we can't take a plane, we've got to get across the country. They take a bus, and then immediately there are problems. Three old ladies got on the bus. They look like Mrs. Dobbs. All three Furies, and they want to kill Percy. They're demanding, where is it? Where is it? It's a huge fight. Bus explodes. Everybody gets off. It's fine. Nobody's hurt, but like, it's a thing. But people snap pictures of Percy. Percy yeah, with his sword in the hand, which, oh, the mist. We haven't talked about the mist. So that's why when Mrs. Dobbs got, like, shish kebab at the museum and then Mrs. Cure showed up, nobody, like, all the mortal kids legitimately did not remember Mrs. Dobbs. Percy could tell that Grover was lying. Because but the mist altered their memory. Yeah, the mist is this, like, the mist is this great plot device. And it's a wonderful plot device. Because if you're wondering, like, how are there monsters and gods and demigods in this world, just around all the time, actually, but like normal humans don't see him. Well, they can't see him. Why? Because the mist, and it's like in the Iliad and the Odyssey. We will circle back to that when it comes up, probably in Sea of Monsters. When Percy pulls out a sword, they don't see the sword. They see like a gun or a baseball bat or something like that. They don't see the the kindly ones, the Furies, as their Furies. They probably see him as like violent old ladies or maybe like dogs or big vultures. It's a whole yeah. thing. They're off the bus. They're trekking through the woods. They all—they lost all their stuff. They don't have their money. They don't have their supplies. They are kind of fucked. So they find Auntie M's garden emporium, which is just this yep. bunch of statues all over, and they can smell burgers. And Annabeth and Percy are starving, and Grover's like, "This place is weird. We shouldn't go here." But they ignore their satyr, and they go all in, and they meet Auntie M, who makes garden statues, and that's weird. But she's nice and gives them food, and, and she seems cool. Really, they're really detailed. Really and it's a very detailed. nice. And and the faces are kind of horrifying. And the faces are, are they're scared, they're terrified, mm -hmm. they're always not correct according to Auntie M. Yep, yep, yep. And then surprise, bitches! It's actually Medusa. Because yeah, whoa, whoa, big surprise. Big surprise. If you want to have a story about the Greek gods and your main character is going to be named Percy, you're going to have Medusa. Yeah, there. yeah. Yeah. They are able to fight Medusa. Don't look at her. Obviously, the whole thing. Behead her. And they're like, okay, well, now we have a head because it's apparently a spoils of war because Perseus had the head of Medusa and was able to use that bad boy. Yep. So they don't look at the head because it can still turn <laughs> so into stone. He, he takes the head and sends it to Mount Olympus. Mm hmm. As you said, <laughs> like for the gods, pretty much eat shit. Here you go. <laughs> so they go camping in the woods. 
They find this poodle. A girl finds a poodle. We friends the poodle, Gladiolus, who something like that. Yeah, who is like this bridge family's poodle, and they're like, okay, I'm like I don't want to go back, but I'll go back for you guys because you guys need the money and you seem tight, which is super weird. Weird. That felt really out of play. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, which yeah, it's really interesting because a lot of like they encounter a lot of monsters or creatures in the book, and that that feels very like random and sporadic, but towards the end i started to realize i don't know like every single thing that they did and everything that they encountered actually does drive the plot forward like okay they would like yeah the, they would have taken the bus but the furies destroyed the bus so because they did that that's how they met medusa and that's how they get the head of medusa and that's how things happen later and so all that works except for the poodle thing the poodle thing the is poodle one thing, like just, it comes out of nowhere and then they just get to one it. it's the one like deus machina thing that i'm like okay Okay. Like, honestly, they could have, like, scrounged around on TMs a little more. Like, she probably got a cast register, yeah. you know? Like, like this, because this was there. a stone emporium that people bought shit at. Yeah, unless everybody's She's got to have a safe, right? Checks. Anyway, they get on the train. They zip through. Annabeth, they're talking about, like, how you can't trust Hades. She describes him as deceitful, heartless, and greedy, which, like, seems a little aggressive but you shortly later find out that annabeth was one of the kids who had been traveling with talia who yeah. hades is responsible for her dad so, so it was she's annabeth talia and uh, luke. luke and grover and grover it was rough uh but they stop on the train they stop in st louis to visit the arch because being a child of athena annabeth loves architecture she wants to well, build they, ha- they have a layover they didn't stop specifically for that no she, they, she, they makes them, she makes them get off Oh, okay. Yeah, it was it was a stop in St. Louis. I thought it was a layover. It's a train. I I was like, (laughs) listen, man, I don't know train schedules. Like, there's different tracks. So they they get off, they check out the arch, and of course they're attacked by a monster. But not just any monster, they're attacked by the chimera. And the mother and of Echidna, monsters, Echidna. But she hates the she hates the the little the little monster the little uh, mammal in Australia. She takes as a personal slight, yeah. She does. I wonder what she thinks about, like, the Sonic franchise. Uh, I mean, honestly, I think she'd be into it. Like, yeah, I like that kid. Okay. okay. <laughs> That's cool. He's strong. So in order to get away, because the Chimera has, like, stabbed Percy with its scorpion tail. He's poisoned. He's dying. It's it's the first time that Percy legitimately comes close to dying. Like, he realized, like, this is what it's actually like in this world. And I'm like, I don't know if I can survive this. And then he jumps out into a river below. Yep. Because he, but like this was a total gamble because he had no idea if his magic would work. Yeah, literally. But he actually like literally leap of faith because he pray, he's like prays like Father, please help me. He lands. And then he just fucking falls. Yeah, he jumps and he lands in the river and he's fine. He's healed. It doesn't hurt. He should have crushed him to bits because that kind of pressure into the water, you'll get flattened. Yeah. But he's okay. And uh, while he's under the water, he sees this like glowing water spirit woman, who later we find out is a Nereid, um, who tells him, you got to go to Santa Monica Pier. Keep going. Don't trust the gifts. Santa Monica Pier. I may have spaced out on it because I was working while I was listening to this stuff, but what were the gifts? Okay, so the gifts that she's saying don't trust are literally, oh, because Luke gave him a pair of like flying shoes, which he can't wear because the air, so Grover has those bad boys on. Then Ares is going to give him some gifts later, who, spoiler, they're about to eat Ares. So literally any gift anybody has given Percy, okay, yeah, don't trust that shit. Okay. So then they go to Denver, because that's as far as their train chick was going to take them, and that's where they happen to meet Ares. Hey! Like, hey! So listen. Um, He's like, hey, hey uh, you're a piece of shit, but I'll buy you a burger. I'll buy you a burger, and Aries sucks. He's just constantly has like making them feel very aggressive and violent. And Percy's like, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. He's like, listen, uh, I left my shield at this like water park while I was hanging out with my girlfriend. Uh, I need you to go get that for me. And they're like, we can't. Literally, you can't say no when a god gives you a quest. So they go skip over. It's the whole golden net thing. It turns out to be a trap with Hephaestus. And so they gotta go through, and it's a. We find out thing. Annabeth is afraid of spiders. Deathly afraid of spiders. Holy oh, fuck! Oh, it's a death. Dude, this is a phobia. Phobia. It's like, y'all, like this is not y'all ever seen fucking Indiana Jones? How he is with snakes? It's that. It's that, but worse. Like Annabeth, like the little mechanical spiders come out when they get like trapped in the golden net. She's like, she can't do anything. It's too much for her to deal with. I do not blame her. I totally understand because, as we find out later, like Athena's children, like spiders hate them specifically because the whole Athena Arachne making a net thing. Which, yeah, yeah, whole it's it's a whole it's thing. Cannot deal. We'll get to that later, we'll to maybe. That later. 
but they make it out of that situation because, you know, Percy is brave, Annabeth is smart, and Grover is loyal. They That's how yep. they survive that. They get the shield, they give it to Hades, or not Hades, they give it to Ares, fuck you. Ares gives them a backpack and they're like, okay, here you go. And also just hop on this uh, truck and you'll get to Vegas. Yeah. And then we find out the truck is illegally hauling wild, rare animals, like an albino lion. And like a zebra. And that sucks. Like, that was... Oh, yeah. And then they were, really like, sad. just fucking held in, like, some of the worst situation ever. Yeah. Side note. Animal wildlife care is very difficult. Zoos can be very helpful to help with preservation and conservation efforts. And also, like, educating people about these creatures they usually won't see. So that's how people learn to care about them. But always do research if you're going to visit any of these, like, places where live wild animals are being held and make sure that it is actually doing good in the world that's just my psa so they get to vegas they release the animals percy can talk to the zebra because horses because poseidon made horses so cool there's another power in percy's demigod utility belt they go they're like oh sweet we've got like a week before the solstice we are making such great time we should just dip in this casino real quick lotus casino man they got like arcade games going crazy this is great we can, like, eat a full-ass meal since Denver. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah, we're having we play these games. We're just going to hang out for a bit. It's great. We're 12. Hey, this kid over here looks like a hippie and keeps saying groovy and does think it's, like, 1970s. We gotta go. Yeah, Percy realizes something's very, very wrong, that this place is magic. It wants to keep them in. Yeah, some people think they've been there for a couple weeks. They've clearly been there for decades. He gets Annabeth and Grover. They drag themselves out. They check a newspaper, obviously. It's 2005. And, uh, oh shit, tomorrow we gotta is go. the summer solstice. Which is wild, which is another thing that like makes me wonder what is up with, well, not even the Lotus Casino, because the Lotus Casino will come back later. And that's, I think, why it's introduced yeah. now. Because it's also one of those things that feels weird. If we wanted it to be like, oh, they're too close to the deadline, then it could have been they started the quest later and that's where the deadline is at so the lotus casino i think only exists in this moment to introduce it as a concept so it can be useful later in the series and it is and it's great and i love it we'll talk about the lotus eaters and stuff in another episode annabeth being smart wise girl as percy calls her takes one of the casino credit cards they got from the lotus hotel which had just unlimited money on it they take a taxi and they're like we need to go to la swipe the card it's got all the money Yes, your highness, let's go. Pretty much go. an Amex black card. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, Percy's been the subject of a manhunt because, you know, he and his mom went missing and all of a sudden he, he was, was seen being... photographed behind, in front of a blown up bus. <laughs> uh, the arch was blown up and he was spotted there. Animals released and he was spotted there. <laughs> Yeah, it's a whole thing. Uh, they was with the biker, and because Harry's appeared as a biker at that burger joint when he was telling him to get a shield. They get seen and spotted there, too. And so Percy's like, cool. Do you see his stepdad on the news just crying like, oh. And meanwhile, he already has another fucking chick. I'm so sad. I just hope they find him. Yeah, so he's like, oh, my grief counselor, sugar. Like, uh-huh, sure, bitch. But they're in L.A. now. They get stuck at a weird with mattress store. With Procrustius. <laughs> Who traps Grover and Annabeth on beds and tries to stretch them out. Because they don't fit just right. And he needs them to be exactly six feet to fit the bed. And if they're too long, he'll just chop, up, chop them and it'll be fine. And he's like some character from Greek myth who once tried to like almost killed one of the heroes with excessive hospitality. And it's at this point that I realize, wow, Chiron is a great fucking team. Yeah. Because Procrustius is a deep cut. That's a deep myth cut. Like, that's not... I know the Minotaur. I know Hades and yeah. Persephone. I know... No. Like, and Percy remembers this. And he knows how to get to him. Like, Percy convinces him. Like, how does... Really? I'm super interested in your mattresses, actually. Tell me more. Huh? <laughs> you will not feel it at all. It, it's like a... Like, you get on it. Try it. And then decapitates him. Yep. Yep. I, it was this point when I actually realized that every single event that they go to, every encounter actually does lead to the next thing. Because I was like, this is such a weird, like, why did we do this? Like, drag we we could have right? cut this. But no, that's actually where they find, like, the card. Yeah, they get money. Yeah, they get DOA, and they also... DOA records. They, they, well, they knew of DOA records. That's the thing. But, like, no one knew what that was. It was like, what do you, like the taxi driver was like, DOA records, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Which is great, because it's dead or alive records. They, they meet uh, Charon. You need to go to the underworld, and here's a bunch of drachmas, like, let us in. Because he's like, I need a raise. Like, I'm working hard. I want to wear my Italian suits. Uh, one thing I need to call out is that when we're describing Charon, he's like, well-dressed, suits, very slick. He's described as having chocolate-colored <laughs> skin. 
and I recognize again 2005 is his first book I'm sure Uncle Rick doesn't pull that shit now but here's just a thing to or any writers who who maybe uh listen to this do not describe your characters who have dark skin as food colored <laughs> just just at all not mocha not latte not not chocolate it's not a compliment it is super fetishizing yes I am a white lady I'm not the end all be all on this, I'm just telling you what I have read from yeah. other writers who are people of color. Also, if like you're only ever describing characters' skin colors when they're not white, that's also a problem. Just that's another PSA. Don't do that thing. Moving on. The end of the underworld. The underworld is a whole thing. We will have a big episode discussing the underworld. Yeah. They get past Cerberus. Past Cerberus with a nice ball. He just wants a good. He wants a good game of catch because he's a dog. He's, he's a, a big, good boy. He's a big three-headed doggo. He's a Doberman. Annabeth had a dog. They went, took the dog to obedience school when she was young, so she knows how to get past the dog. So that's sweet. They get in. Grover almost gets pulled into Tartarus. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Because the the shoes that Luke gave him, they were basketball shoes with little fucking wings on the end of them, so they could fly. Grover, yeah, as as uh, Darian said, he gave him Percy, but because you know the air is not the greatest for a son of Poseidon. Uh, Grover was wearing them, and he used them, and like he used them pretty well, honestly. Like he was getting very used to them. But the moment they showed up in the underworld, they started to drag Grover to the yeah. pit of Tartarus, which is really bad. Holy fuck! Is Tartarus just not mm-mm, the greatest mm-mm. place to be? We, already, as we know from earlier. Once the Greek gods overthrew the Titans, they chopped up Cronus into little pieces and threw him in the Tartarus. Yep, and we know that all monsters that die just kind of reappear in Tartarus. Oh yeah, we st- we didn't talk about like how is the Minotaur here? How are those monsters here? They were defeated. It's like well because they don't really have souls, I guess. So they just eventually will reform and go back to Earth because again plots. We need we need we need monsters for our plot and. New Greek monsters aren't coming around yeah, every day. Like, if you so. want to make a book about Greek mythology, like you're going to have to have the big players. You've got to have this icon show up. And then they get to Hades' palace. And they meet Hades, who's just the first god that they meet who looks like a god. He's just like massive. And it's like, like a total toga. And just no. like, okay, children, welcome. It's like, you've got some nerve. I want that bolt. I want my helm back. Because twist, Hades' helm was also stolen. What are you talking about? You have the bolt. <laughs> And it's a total back and forth. He said, she said, you know, and, and then like Hades is like, oh no, it's in your bag. Yeah, and then, oh shit, it's in the bag. And they're like, but you stole the bolt because you wanted a war. Like, why the fuck would I want that? I'm busy enough as is. Have you seen the fields? They're overcrowded and that's an infinite landscape. Yeah. So Hades immediately starts <laughs> bitching about the challenges of infrastructure. Don't even get me started on Karen and his Italian Like, you want to raise? Like, I don't know, maybe stop buying these suits. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want a war. I don't want more people down here. Like, I'm busy. Oh, Santa Monica Pier. So they went to oh, Santa yeah, Monica Pier before going to the underworld. They got some pearls that would help them get out of the underworld, but they only have three. And then Hades reveals, like, all right, if you give me my helm, you give me my helm back, I'll give you your mom. Because Sally Jackson didn't die. Hades stole her right before she was she about to She uses a bargaining chip, which is, which is fucked. But which is fucked. And he's like, if yeah. you don't have my helm, I'll take one of your lives. And Annabeth's volunteering to be like, all right, you take your mom. I'll stay and fight. And Grover's like, no, no, no. I don't really have a soul. I'm a satyr. I'll just come back as a flower. You should go. And Percy's like, no one is staying behind. No, we're we are we're all leaving. leaving. And then... I'm making the decision. So they use the pearls to escape. Unfortunately, they have to leave Sally behind because there's only three of them. Yeah, so the, the lightning bolt is now in the backpack that, a- that Ares gave them. And Percy's like, okay, we've been played and I don't care for this shit. So they dip out. They get back up. They get rescued. There are earthquakes. Hades is pissed. Zeus is pissed. Everybody's pissed. There's about, it's summer solstice. There's about to be a war. Kronos is probably waking up. Ares Zeus, shows or, up Hades. real quick. Ares shows up. Hey, so you were supposed to yeah, die. Like, you are supposed to die. Like, what the fuck, bro? Twist, it turns out that Ares has the helm. And he was the one that gave Percy the lightning bolt secretly. Because the backpack was the sheath. And once they got to the underworld, the lightning bolt reappeared. He didn't steal it, but he doesn't tell them who did. And Percy's like, why would you do this? And he's like, why wouldn't you just take, why wouldn't you just keep, yeah, why don't you just hold the lightning bolt for yourself? And Ares gets like kind of weird. He's like, yeah, why, why wouldn't I have just kept the lightning bolt for myself? Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's like, he goes into a trance. He's like, it would cost too much. It's way better to start a war between the, the things. And I get to have fun because it's war. And Percy's like, I don't think this was your idea at all. Because here's the thing we forgot to mention because it's Percy's like, 
having dreams about some voice from that scary ass pit and someone talking to it. And it's like, oh, this and is Annabeth bad. is already putting it to Yeah, Annabeth's smart and she's already put two and two it's together. Like, no, no, it, it's gotta be Hades. And then like it's not Hades, and she's like, shit. Ares is like, I'm gonna just take the lightning bolt and I'm gonna kill you because I can't have you telling anybody about what happened here today. And then uh Percy challenges him to a fight. He's like, if I win, you give me the helm and you have to leave us alone. And if you win, you can kill me and take the bolt and whatever. So they fight and it's wild because this is the god of war and Percy's 12. And Percy's holding his home. <laughs> Percy does not win. He does not really beat Ares. He's lucky because Ares isn't bright. Yeah. Ares is not smart. He gets lucky and he's able to outmaneuver Ares. And so ultimately, and but also they're right by the ocean. They are literally oh yeah, by he the uses, ocean. He uses like seven foot waves to just knock Ares off balance while he like slashes at him, which kind of cheating, but I mean, he's just using his arsenal. Yeah, he, he nicks Ares in the heel and draws blood just a little bit. But if you're able to draw that like, golden ichor from a They're god you win mad. like that's it that's all it takes like yeah the god can kill you and stuff but like if you're able to scratch him like that's yeah evil. like i mean a mortal scratch your god unprecedented so Ares is pissed he's about to murder him and then once again something seems to stop and he's like well fuck you i'm gonna curse you next time i'm on the battlefield watch out because you have my like curse whenever now. you raise a sword to someone you'll be at a disadvantage so then he d- shows his like true form and uh, they look away. Obviously, you don't see their gods in their true form or you will be burned to death. We'll and he, he we'll dips. But good news, because hey, a bunch of people like saw this fight happen. They didn't see him go into the true form, but they saw the fight happen. And now <laughs> the new narrative is that Percy and his friends were kidnapped by this horrible biker and forced into this cult. And they've been trying to escape this whole time. And Percy's really, f- it's not his fault at all. <laughs> this is just a fun side note. On live news, he's like, yeah. I'm sure my stepdad, Gabe, would love to give everyone in Los Angeles a free appliance from his store in New York as a thank you for helping us. The Furies. I forgot. So he gets the helm back from Ares yeah, after the fight, back. and he gives it back to Mrs. Dobbs. And Mrs. Dobbs is actually pretty cool about it. It's like, like, if we didn't mean to cause you this much trouble, man, we thought you took this thing. So I'm mean, like... I'm sorry <laughs> yeah they don't apologize but they're pretty they... cool about it she says like grow up to become a brave and true hero because if you cross my path again i will kill you which is like the nicest thing i think anybody has said to percy on this trip so far oh yeah <laughs> which is weird because it's his math teacher that he murdered in like the first she tried to days. kill him first they're even now <laughs> so he gives the helm back to hades hades keeps his end of the bargain and bring like deliver sally back home immediately so a bunch of people raise money they get the kids a plane ticket to send them back to new york because they only had like 12 hours left they had to fly they were pretty sure he's like we got the bowl and zeus won't risk damaging this by just to blast percy out of the air so we're gonna fly back yeah (laughs) like we're just it'll be fine it'll be fine and percy sends annabeth and grover back to camp half-blood to tell chiron everything that happened because somebody's got to know but also Percy's not sure he's going to come back from Mount Olympus alive. Like, Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if I'm coming down. Percy hightails it up to the top of Mount Olympus, floor 600, at the Empire State Building. Goes out. It's Zeus and Poseidon are waiting for him. He gives back the bolt, explains what happened. Zeus is like, nope, not, it's not Kronos. We're not fucking talking. I'm not, we're not going to hear about it. We're not talking about this. That's the end of the discussion. And because you brought back the bolt, my gift to you is your life. Zeus is like, well, I'm glad you got my bolt back, but if you ever try to take a plane again anywhere i'll kill you zeus dips he's got to go purify his lightning bolt which uh okay that's a euphemism that lightning bolt was all over the place he specifically says he needs to purify it to get the mortal taint off of it yeah so which leaves percy alone with his father poseidon for the first time ever and it's just like hey and it's not like a great conversation because it's like super weird and awkward and poseidon does say like I wish you were never born because I've given you like a terrible fate of a hero. And Percy's like, cool, 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 cool. Yeah. I'm 12. <laughs> love hearing that. Love, love, love hearing I'm that 12. from my father. And it sucks. That's and Percy's great. like, okay, well, I feel really sad and uh, gross. But like right when he's about to leave, Poseidon's like, because like they're not allowed to show favoritism even if their kids are not supposed to be nice. Again, the great gods suck. But to Poseidon's credit, before Percy leaves, he tells him, hey, don't take any of this to mean that I'm not proud of you. Whatever you do next, no, you are a true son of the sea god. And that means a lot to Percy, who's 12 and just wants his dad's approval because I'm 26 and I still want my dad's approval. I get it. <laughs> and I still, I still like, it's completely like, 
he says that his mom is a once is like a woman who like is like no other is a queen among women and it's like no other that he's seen in a thousand years and i'm like man Poseidon just called percy's mom the lay of the millennia <laughs> <laughs> that was the whole thing so then and that's when percy finds out that his mom is back home that hades kept up his end of the bargain rad so he goes home yeah and then and then he's like hey don't open the box in your bed don't don't do that <laughs> percy goes home gabe is there still an asshole about to threaten to call the cops apartment's on a mess his mom is there and gabe like threatens to hit her and his mom flinches and that's when percy's like oh this guy has been hitting my mom this guy's actually been we know he's verbally he's been physically abusive to my mom for who knows yeah. how and percy's ready to kill him like he's got Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Percy's like he grabs Riptide, but he can't do anything about it because it won't hurt mortals. Because Celestial Bond just passes by. Passes yep, right yep. Through so mortals. it'll only kill monsters and like Greek myth bullshit, and also demigods because they're of both worlds. They can be hurt by anything. It's like yeah, <laughs> yeah. you got these cool superpowers, but also everybody wants to kill you all the time. So they're talking in Percy's room, and then the box shows up just out of nowhere and is like, "I could take care of Gabe right now." And Silas like, "No, I got to do this on my own." Like, okay, when you want to, that box right there is your ticket This could help you, yeah. And Sally's like, because she's like, oh, he's been really good to us. Because here's, oh, we forgot this. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if we explained it. The reason. Uh, The box is Medusa's head. Oh, the box is Medusa's head. But the reason Sally married Gabe in the first place was literally because of that, like, moldy garlic human smell about him. It was so pungent. It was so putridly human. That it hid the son of a sea god. That's the reason Percy survived for so long and only had like a few weird experiences rather than every day the Minotaur shows up to try to kick his ass. It's because Sally married this guy specifically knowing that he would hide her son because she wanted Percy to stay with her. She didn't want to send him away to summer camp. She wanted her son to know that she loved him and was not just getting rid of him because he was inconvenient or difficult. Like, But Sally Jackson is great. And so, like, Percy leaves. He's like, I'm going to go back to Camp Half-Blood. And she's like, okay, well, will I see you at the end of the summer? And he's like, I don't really know yet. But the uh, whole t- he, like, the whole time, Gabe is, like, screaming, like, where's my meatloaf? Where's my meatloaf? That kid better leave her. I'm going to call the cops on him. And Sally Jackson's fine. Like, you know what? Yeah, okay. good. Okay. And so... And then drops the head of Medusa right in front of him when he's playing poker and sells his body off. Yep, yep. Just kills all of them. <laughs> And because we find out later, like, that's how she's, she sold her this art. She found her new apartment and she's using the money she got from uh, selling her ex's statue to pay to go to college. And that's, that's interesting because on one hand, it's like, all right, Gabe sucked. We know he sucked. He was a monster. He was abusive. He was a terrible person. He was a bad person. But like, I don't believe in the death penalty and I don't believe in like this kind of like, just. I believe in restorative justice. So like killing in the context of a fictional book and Greek. in Greek, um, I'm fucking all for it because Sally Jackson becomes the avenging goddess. Like, that is what that sequence is. Percy goes back to Camp Half-Blood, knowing his mom is taken care of because, like, Percy's like, I wanted to save her. My dad wanted to give her a palace under the ocean, but, like, Sally has to be able to save herself. And she does because she's the avenging goddess and it's great. And then she gets rid of, she's like, tells Percy, she's like, and that'll be my last statue. I've gotten rid of the tools you gave me. Yeah. <laughs> That's just crazy. Like, we want another statue by Sally Jackson. And she's it like, is inhumane and no. no thank you. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you for your no. money, but I'm not doing that again. I don't plan on marrying another asshole. Thanks. So Percy goes back and to Camp Half Blood. And, and she does it. So Percy goes back to Camp Half Blood and has just a great summer. He hangs out with Annabeth, and Grover gets his searcher's license to go look for Pan and gets, and it's, it's great. Like, he has so much fun. Dionysus calls him Peter Johnson. Because continually, continually refuses to acknowledge his actual life. Even Annabeth, too, like, just continues, like, yeah, Annabeth's been there for five, six years now. He's like, yeah, it's uh, Annabelle, Annie girl. Who gives a shit? Yeah, his favorite game is, I'm gonna pretend I don't know your names. It's like, that feels like more work on your part than just saying their names, but okay. It's great. And, but Percy's still like, am I gonna go home, or am I gonna stay here? Because, but like... there's, like, the prophecy, we gotta talk about that real quick. The prophecy he got pretty much predicted... Go west, and the god who was turned was Ares. Mm-hmm. What was stolen safe from return? Obviously, the helm and the lightning yeah. bolts. But the thing that is bothering Percy pretty much the whole summer is that he hadn't been betrayed yet. Mm-hmm. When am I going to be betrayed? And he was constantly looking out for that because fuck, Grover and Annabeth were willing to give their life mm-hmm. for Percy. Like, so he's he doesn't know what to do. I never realized that Annabeth was supposed to be a red herring until I was reading it through this last time. Was she? Yeah, and I, because one, she's kind of like we talked about, an asshole to Percy. 
because of the whole Poseidon and Athena thing. So clearly, like, very abrasive to Percy. She's got a the Yankees cap that lets her turn invisible. And they're talking about how, like, well, the person who would have stolen the lightning bolt would have been able to, like, go undetected. That could be Annabeth. And so Percy's also looking for someone who's going to betray him. And so it's, I didn't realize it, but it's very heavily, like, geared to be like, oh, was it Annabeth? Like, is she the friend who will, like, betray Percy? Was it her? And then, no, fucking obviously not. Because when I was actually reading it, when I was 12, I didn't pick up no. on those cues. So it wasn't until I'm an adult that I'm like, oh, it's supposed to be Even Annabeth. Even me, like, reading through it, I didn't pick up on that shit. Because I'm like, yeah, Annabeth. Like, she's just a fucking cool character. <laughs> Yeah. At the end of the summer, every, he's still deciding as to whether or not he's going to stay or go or mm-hmm. whatever. Like even Annabeth is going yeah. home. She like talked about like she doesn't she doesn't have a great relationship with her dad or her stepmom, but she's like I'm going to try again. I wrote my dad. He wrote me a letter. I wrote him back. I'm going to go home, and he's like, "Good for you. Good luck." And so Percy's like, "I'm going to kind of be here by myself." I don't I don't know. Know. And then Luke pulls him off the side for like a final goodbye, mm-hmm. and it's it's weird because Luke was swinging a sword that was half celestial bronze and half steel tap leads aren't supposed to hurt mortals in any situation ever so yeah. why does he have that and then he's also got cans of diet coke which you're not supposed to have outside food or drink at camp half blood mm-hmm. and they don't have cans and shit for diet coke unless it's dionysus summoning a can of diet coke but that's a whole situation so he, like there's a lot of shit pointing to it and then he just Luke throws summons a can a in scorpion. the river yeah he throws a can in the river and then Luke summons a scorpion, and it just stabs Percy, and then he turns out Luke's re- working for Kronos. Yeah, so, <laughs> so we find out that, like, Luke. yeah, Luke is the most jaded for oh, the Greek he's, gods. He's, he's like, they sent him mad. Yeah, they sent him on this quest, and it was a bullshit quest just to and give him something just to do. Him aside and, he never and they're like, okay, anything. you did it by. And he's like, what the fuck? And yeah. so he's angry, so Kronos is able to influence him. During Christmas, when they, ha- I guess we didn't mention, during the winter solstice, everyone who was still at Camp Half-Blood for the winter went on a field trip to Mount Olympus, where the gods were having their meeting, and that's when Luke stole the helm and the lightning bolt. And Ares, because, you know, Poseid- or Zeus sent everybody to go find his lightning bolt, Ares found Luke, and then Kronos influenced Ares to be like, you shouldn't turn him in. You should take the lightning bolt for yourself. Hey, and then give it to, get it to Hades, so yeah. th- there's a war. And Ares is like, oh, cool. I'll do that. But it's just Kronos. Ares is a brain little boy. Yeah, Ares is very easy to manipulate. So then, that, so Luke's like, yeah, I'm gonna leave, and uh, Kronos is coming back, and we're gonna tear down the Olympians, because they suck. You've seen how they used you, how they manipulated all of us. Like, yep. we're out. Bye. And Percy barely makes it out of that situation with his life. He gets stung by the scorpion, makes it into the creek, but he's dying. Luckily, Chiron finds him. They heal him up. They talk about it. And he's like, this? I can't hide here. I gotta go back home. And we'll yep. see what happens That's next. A, a That's happy a, ending. That's a quote happy unquote, ending. With air quotes. Happy yeah. ending because he gets to go home and spend a year with his mother because that's great. Mm-hmm. Sad ending because the guy who he thought was like a close friend to him. Super working for Kronos and also Kronos is coming back, at, but Zeus and the other Olympians don't want to talk about it. And that will certainly not cause more issues than necessary. Oh, what? oh it won't. Of course it won't. Why would it? No, no, no. So that is The Lightning Thief. Woo! And I liked it. That's I had really book. fun. It's a wonderful book. Yeah, I had a really, really Holy good time shit. reading it again. Yeah. <laughs> Join us for the bonus episode when we talk about how piss poor the fucking movie was. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Not. Yeah. <laughs> maybe eventually if we get like, <laughs> if we get a hundred <laughs> patrons on Patreon, we will talk about the movie. How does that sound? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. We just don't want to talk about the movie. That movie. I don't want to talk about the movie so bad for a lot of reasons. Holy okay. Fuck. Well, we're not going to talk about it here. This is podcast. It's podcast time. We talk about the, <laughs> we talk about the things we like, and I like this book. I think it's really well written. Like we talked about, book is wonderful. When I was like reflecting on it before I started, I was like, that book is just a series of events that just kind of happen. Here's the fury. Here's Medusa. Here's the Chimera, and it feels very like what? But then you're actually in it. And, and they so, had like tiny little details at the end of each one that was just tying yeah, them into the like next. Every one, single action, which is great. yeah, every single action or event except for that poodle does lead into yeah, the poodle. So out of fucking left yeah, field. Yeah, it's really. It's like they he needed something to bridge NTMs to the next thing, and so like they're camping and they find a runaway dog. It's like a pink poodle. Yeah, 
I'm like, That's but I think it's to have thing. Grover do something because he's like the he can talk to animals, and so the poodle likes him specifically, and that's why they're willing to help. But yeah, yeah, it's the one thing where I'm like, you could have gotten money from Medusa's place, but we yeah, just they, like there's a lot of things they could have done. But I digress. So, Davis, what's your favorite part of the book? Ooh, that's a hard one. Honestly, I really like the betrayal of Luke. I think that really? was I think that was like a really like as a kid I didn't see it fucking coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even now, if I knew nothing about it, I probably wouldn't have seen it coming. And I think like it's either completely thrown out of left field, but then you also think about it: who was there during the winter solstice during the field trip? Which yeah, Annabeth, but Luke too. But Luke. I mean, he's the son of the Hermes, and anytime you brought up the gods or even like especially Hermes around him, he'd get fucking mad. Yeah, he definitely, you could tell he had, like, a chip on his yeah. shoulder about something. And so it's, like, it's great. And it's just, because, like, yeah, fucking Luke trains Percy and was, like, friends with him all summer just to suddenly go around and fucking try to kill him. Well, Percy was supposed to die on the quest. It's, it's great. Um, and I think it's just wonderful. And I thought, like, man, who would ever expect the son of Hermes to be the fucking villain? No, it's very good. Luke gives Percy those shoes that were supposed to drag him to Tartarus. All of this stuff. I think it really works. And fuck, and if, if Percy was wearing those shoes, he would have. Because the only reason Grover got out is because of his hooves. Yeah, it, it fell off, which is a problem that was set up before. The shoes would often fall off his feet. So I think that was really good. I think the book is like, obviously, Rick Riordan's first novel. It, it's it can it's be really got issues. Difficult. It holds up really because I am a huge fan of the Shadowhunter series by Cassandra Clare. They are my favorite. I love them all. I have my first tarot card set is the Shadowhunter tarot. <laughs> it's really hard to reread City of Bones, which was the first one. It's just a little messy. There's some weird choices. The decision, like one of the characters explains what demons are to a demon because <laughs> Clary, who doesn't know what demons are, just happens to overhear, but they don't know Clary. Like it's, I love the books. But it's rough. And so I will definitely like hand it to to old Uncle Rick that as a first book, like as a kid's book, even like he clearly had, he was a teacher. He had a lot of respect for his audience. Yeah. Like you can tell that. Whereas like you, there are some books when you can tell that like early on, they. They'll chastise and patronize the children that read it. Meanwhile, he's like. These are just kids. They don't care. Kids are going to understand it even if I just write it in. Like it'll be fine. Like for me, reading Sea of Monsters as a child, I didn't know what the fucking Odyssey was. That shit was fun, though. I loved that book. <laughs> we will talk about Sea of Monsters in a future episode. Yep. But uh, going forward, the next several episodes will actually be us talking about the individual myths that have appeared in the book. Characters that Percy met, events that he went through with his friends, the things that actually are inspired specifically by Greek myths. We're going to talk about the original versions of those myths, and we're going to talk about the various ways they've been remixed over time, and not just in The Lightning Thief, but in just tons of media. Yep. I believe the first one we're doing is actually going to be The Fates. But in, until the next episode, uh, thank you, thank you all so much for, for joining us. And keep up to date with what we're doing and updates for the podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. We are Podcast of Poseidon on all of them. You can find us at podcastofposeidon.com. Send us an email at poseidonpod at gmail because we would love to hear from you. Let us know if you like the series. If you liked what you heard today, it would mean a lot to us if you reached out to your Percy Jackson loving friends and told them about us. And if you didn't like what you heard today, it would mean a lot to us if you reached out to your Percy Jackson friends and told them about us so they could listen and then you could all just talk about how much you hated us together. Isn't it fun to bond with friends? We'll be in your ears in two I weeks' time. Like, I don't like being in your ears. <laughs> I don't like being in your ears. Uh, I thought of a good <laughs> outro, though. I did. Oh, cool. Okay. We'll be back in two weeks, and until next time, don't be like Zeus. Don't be like Zeus. Podcast of Poseidon is created, produced, and hosted by Darian and DJ Smart. It's edited by Darian Smart. Our music is Athens Festival by Martin Hayne. Our cover art is by Audrey Miller. Find them on Instagram at Bombshell Nutshell. Come hang out with us on Instagram and Twitter at Podcast of Poseidon. Find all of our episodes and episodes transcripts at podcastofposeidon.com. Thanks for listening. <laughs>